Hi, I'm Cheryl Piper. I'm a marketing coordinator here at Sepro Systems in Vancouver, Canada. And today I'm talking with my colleague, Dom Corsetti of our Sepro Montreal office. Uh, that's um, basically, he heads up the uh, Sepro aggregates division uh, in the Montreal office. And I'm here excited to talk to him today about some projects that he's worked on through the years and just to get to know him a bit better. So thank you for joining me today, Dom. And I uh, just wanted to start off with asking you uh, some of your background and your history and your training in the industry and how you got here today. Thanks very much for having me, um, Cheryl. Um, so uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by uh, profession. Uh, I studied at the University of Concordia. Uh, I specialized in um, gas turbine theory, just because I loved airplanes growing up as a child. And um, I had aspirations probably, you know, like any kid working for Boeing or one of the major uh, airline uh, uh, companies in the future. However, my dad had different ideas um, at the time. Um, Basically, Carminex, in a nutshell, started in 1988 as a consulting firm in the basement of our house. My dad was one of the founders. He had a partner by the name of uh, Claude Gauthier. Um, over the years, started selling you know, the odd parts, service uh, of quarries, mining industries. And before you knew it, we were a full-blown fabricator. Uh, subsequently moved, obviously, from uh, the basement of our house to a small shop on um, the south shore of Montreal. And uh, over the summers, I mean, when I wasn't in school, um, I would uh, I would work there, you know, doing the odd job, cutting steel, drilling holes. Uh, and eventually, I I got involved in some assembly work, conveyors uh, mostly, and. Um, uh, that was pretty much it when I graduated. Uh, my dad said, uh, you know, I'm getting old. I want to retire one day. So I need to, uh, you need to come and work in the aggregate industry. Forget about your dreams of airplanes. <laughs> uh, we need to buy out my dad. We need to buy out the partner at the time. So that was pretty much it. And I've been in the industry ever since. Um, I love it. Uh, there are many aspects of it that, you know, becoming a mechanical engineer certainly helps because you get to touch on mechanics, hydraulics, uh, electrical stuff. So it's worked out. Uh, it's worked out very well, actually. Um, still love what I'm doing today. Well, that's great. And yeah, just to uh, put a note in here, Sepro uh, Systems bought Carminex, your company, in 2018. And you've stayed on as our engineering manager for aggregates, and we're the better for it. So we uh, that's why we're talking to you today. We don't actually know very much about you as we're in different offices. So um, it, I appreciate you joining me today. So I thought that we could talk about um, some projects that you have done, some bigger projects, and kind of explain the scope and all of the the planning and details that went into these projects, some of the specifications around them, and uh, just like a, a bit of an overview on on you know what you've done in the past few years. And I know there's one large large project that you did uh, for a fixed crushing and screening plant for processing limestone. If you could kind of run through that. Well, that would be the first that would definitely come to mind because it was the biggest project that we've ever done at Carmenex um, as a company. Uh, the scope was huge, like you mentioned. Essentially, it was an entire quarry layout. Uh, the only aspect that we weren't involved is the dynamiting stage of the actual limestone. But from primary crushing right till the final product of 0.5 millimeters, 5.17, and 1.11. All the equipment uh, uh, that went into processing that type of material we were involved in. 
Um, basically, we started with a clean slate. The customer gave us process flow diagram like everything else, and it starts off with all these lines, intersecting okay. lines all over the place. And eventually, you begin with a layout to make sure that everything fits properly. And from there, we begin the design stage. Um, probably uh, just because of the scope of the project was so big, um, we were approached by a few of the bigger things companies, and we sort of formed a, a joint venture with Sandvik. So they would provide us with uh, Crusher and uh, the feeders and screens, and we pretty, pretty much incorporated it into all our designs. So generally, the project, we started with a primary crusher, which fed a 1,300-foot-long regenerative conveyor, we call them. So basically, it's going downhill, and it pretty much flows down uh, with the help of gravity. So when you size you know, the motor for it, it kind of becomes undersized just because gravity is pushing it down. So we use it pretty much to just hold the belt up. Um, from there, I went into this huge uh, reservoir. Uh, and from there, I went onto a scalping screen, we call it, which sort of uh, separates the oversized rocks uh, from the smaller ones. The bigger oversized rocks end up into the first stage of uh, crushing, which are the cone crushers. The oversized of the cone crushers went into the secondary cone crushers. And eventually we went into the towers for screening and separating. So we finally ended up with three stockpiles of the required material that the customer was looking for. Hmm. Wow. And then that, so you guys put together the entire plant, like shoots, all the, all the little bits and pieces, everything that was required. Yes, exactly. So, okay. I mean, yeah, the engineering wise, I mean, engineering wise, it was a huge, uh, definitely a very big undertaking because yeah. we ended up with like, a, you know, probably 50 conveyors, all the different transfer points. So it's not like any of these conveyors were the same. You know, you had different lengths, different elevations, some were crisscrossing. It's not like everything was in a straight line and followed nicely. None of that. <laughs> was the case <laughs> in this project. So, I mean, yeah, that was quite the endeavor, uh, trying to coordinate all the different draftsmen to make sure that everything sort of fit. And uh, at the same time, I mean, you're trying to keep up with fabrication as well, which in our case wasn't too bad because basically you would just walk down from our offices and we were in our fab shop. So, I mean, that, had, that definitely had its advantages. I mean, we were able to fix things um, in a hurry. Um, obviously, you know, prior to anything getting painted and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that definitely helped. And I mean, we had, oof, I don't know how many transports from our uh, South Shore office to, uh, to the Gas Bay region. Endless mm -hmm. transports, like trucks were leaving, uh, you know, every day. And I mean, and then we have, we also had our installation team up there. So we actually uh, on site all our equipment. Yeah, so I mean, coordination, logistics, fabric, wow. the engineering, all of the subcontractors, yeah, it was quite, um, it's quite a big, it's quite big for us, yeah. So from beginning and like all to, projects, yeah. Go ahead. Well, well, I was thinking like, this isn't, this wasn't a three month project. Like I'm assuming this was, how long? You, you would think it wasn't a three-month project, right? <laughs> but like everything else in your industry, it, it, there's always an aggressive timeline. Yeah, stay away from oh. an aggressive timeline. That it never happens, right? <laughs> so yeah, it was more like four to six months. Wow. So that's still I mean, yeah, we, we were, very impressive. Yeah, no, it was an aggressive timeline, and having the advantage of our shop. So obviously, there weren't, you know maybe 50 or 60% of the drawings were done and everything is staggered. So as soon as something was done, we built it. And obviously you will encounter problems doing it that way, but you don't, you didn't really have a choice. And we certainly weren't gonna get a year to do this project. So. No, 
Well, that's very impressive. I'm impressed. Uh, logistically, that's uh, kind of overwhelming, but you know, obviously you did well on that project because you got the next project that fit into that, which was Correct. Uh, a ship loading facility. Correct. So the, the whole objective for the customer at the time was to be able to produce this type. So this, I mean, not all limestone behaves the same way. Not all limestone has the same or equivalent hardnesses and stuff. So this one was a particularly good one for the Florida market. So the Gaspid limestone was all headed for the Florida market. And that's why um, uh, the second phase of the project was basically to transport the rocks, the final product rocks, like the 05 millimeter, the 517 and 111 onto, uh, they call them belly dump trucks. And then eventually it made their way through a series of conveyors and stockpiles and reclaimed conveyors onto a boat. And the boat, you know, being these huge, uh, large, well, I think they call them uh, v -lock, very large ore carriers, basically. And because they're so big, they can't really position themselves on the port. Hmm. So they always sort of, you know, they're always maybe a couple of hundred feet off. So that's where our grasshopper conveyors came in that you could manipulate, move in and out as many as you needed in order to be able to reach the boat wherever it was. And once again, boat also had an aggressive timeline, which means that you they were basically given 24 to 26 hours to load the boat or else there would be huge penalties. And the capacity was quite big. I think we were doing about 1,800 tons an hour on those conveyors and uh, it was all making its way to Florida. Okay, so there was a lot of conveyors and different equipment, but you would have been having maybe different size boats. Were some things interchangeable? Were they, could you edit or add as needed, like long-term for this facility? Correct. So, okay. the, so basically we started with the layout of the actual port. We had an actual dimension of the port, and we figured at most we needed uh, 1,200 feet of conveyors. At least we needed about 500. So we built uh, 11 or 12 conveyors 100 feet long that were mobile on the port. Oh. And they were linked with electric cables. And so you could remove as you needed or add as you needed. And that was pretty much it. And they were all the same. So once we got the original design done for one of them, so this is one of the unique times where we could actually mass produce something once we had the original design. So that was that was a very good project. Pretty straight. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, um, that's that's an interesting, you know, from basically quarry to customer, essentially. You you were encompassing yeah. that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Was there anything that stood out to you as a big pain in the butt that you overcame or something that was kind of a feather in your cap that you felt really proud about those projects that was like a, um, you know, a hard thing to overcome? Well, I mean, probably the biggest thing is the timeline, right? Aggressive timelines. Uh, but you, I mean, you would think that with a, a huge project, I mean, a huge uh, project or a scope of this magnitude, you would have, uh, you know, you'd have like daily or weekly meetings with the customer, but we didn't. And oh. that's probably because we have had, we had a really good relationship with the customer in the past. So it was sort of was solid. So once the layout was done, they pretty much left us alone to do it. But um, like I said before, the major, well, the major, one of the stumbling blocks, you definitely aggressive timelines try and coordinate everything. Uh, I mean, if you can avoid an aggressive timeline, sure. <laughs> if, you can, if you can't, hopefully you'll have a, a good, a solid relationship with the customer, number one, and to your team. You're only as good as your team, right? So from engineering, purchasing, procurement, make sure that everyone's on the same page and uh, ready to work. Uh, yeah. You can pretty much accomplish anything. Yeah, yeah. I would say. That's that's very true. And 
I'm just I'm very impressed at the whole at the whole explanation of it. I think it's very interesting. I kind of wish I you guys had some video of the final project like in operation with, you know, at the site of the uh, the boat sh at a ship a loading facility. But oddly yeah. enough, we have a video of it, Cheryl. <laughs> Do you? Well, I'll, as a marketing person, I'm going to bug you until I get that. I'm going to have to find it. It's, on a, it's actually on a CD. Unfortunately, we did it like 50 years ago, but uh, I do have one. I do have one. Excellent. I can, yeah, I'll definitely mail it to you. Okay. <laughs> that would be great. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Thank you so much for you know sharing this um, experience and a bit of a project overview with me. And I think they will be contacting you again soon to uh, pick your brain about other projects that you've worked on. But thank you so much for meeting with me today. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Dom. Thank you so much, Charles. Entirely my pleasure. Have a good one.